Hello everyone. This time around I'm going to talk a little bit about Pokemon Go. Now of course this is the craze that's been taking over the world for the past little while. Everybody and their dog is, is playing Pokemon Go. Uh, if you look at the guy next to you that has his phone out, odds are he's, uh, he's actually trying to capture a Pokemon, a wild Pokemon that happens to be at that location. Uh, and it's, uh, it's actually, obviously, has made the news uh, and things like that with people doing stupid things, you know, that sort of thing. Now, the game itself is actually a pretty good idea, the, the basic idea behind it. And that is that you actually have to physically get out and go places to actually play the game. Uh, unless you happen to have a gym right outside your house or something like that, in which case you can probably fake it from your sofa uh, if you manage to control that gym. But... Generally, to get items for free and, and things like that, you need to actually go to places where the Poke Stops actually are. To compete with other players, you actually have to go where the gyms actually are. Now, you can short circuit a lot of this by buying stuff with actual money, and this is how they, they bankroll uh, keeping the servers and everything online. Uh, so, you, you know, it's, uh, you can't fault them for that, and the people that have too much money they can go ahead and spend it on the, the game, and that's perfectly fine. But for those of us that don't want to spend money on the game, we can actually go to the Poke Stops and get random loot, and we can go to the gyms and compete, and we can uh, explore and find different uh, Poke Stops in different places. And, and you actually have to go there to activate the stop. So that means there's one at the bottom of the street I live on. Uh, it means I have to go to the bottom of the street to access it. There's actually a couple of pokey stops on a walking trail that's off behind a, 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 the last row of houses before a large green space. And to get there, you have to walk a reasonable distance. You can't just pull up, park your car, and access the uh, pokey stops. They're on the other side of stormwater dry ponds. And, and that means that uh, you actually have to walk to get to those ones. There's the other aspect of Pokemon eggs. They only hatch if they're in an incubator while you're walking with the app open. So that means hatching Pokemon eggs means you have to walk or at least move slowly enough that it can be mistaken for walking or maybe jogging. And that is actually a really good incentive for people to actually walk around. So in general, the idea is pretty good. Uh, it, it gets people out. It's a motivation to go and look at things that you might not have looked at in your neighborhood to learn your neighborhood a little bit more. It's also a motivation to go and check out neighboring neighborhoods and nearby towns and, and points of interest around the place. It, it's probably going to be a little bit of a boon for local tourism as well. Uh, and that's actually a pretty good uh, end result as well. So generally, the game itself, I don't have anything against it. I'm just not sure it's the game for me to spend a lot of time playing. Now... There is a downside to it, and this is the bit that generally makes the news. You see a lot of people these days walking around like this. Or like this. Staring. They're staring at their phone. They're not looking where they're going. So they're not going to notice when they wander off the curb into traffic or stroll into a stop sign or any number of th obstacles, run into other people, uh, mow down bicyclists. And this is just the pedestrians that are playing. And it's dangerous enough as a pedestrian when you're not aware of your surroundings. And quite frankly, anybody that gets into trouble because they're not paying attention deserves what they get. And that includes me. I caught myself not paying attention while I was walking around the other day finding these pokey stops in the back of beyond in the neighborhood. And it, uh, it you deserve what you get if you're not paying attention. Uh, and, but, and, but at least when you're walking, 
you have a better chance of not killing yourself when you run into something. After all, you can. I see people watching where they're going run right into things too. So it, uh, it you know, it happens. Now the real problem is people that are going into private property where they're not allowed to catch wild Pokemons, uh, going into places where they don't need to be to access Pokestops or what have you, or they're going places they shouldn't be at night, or, or, or any number of things like that. And, and then, of course, they're getting into trouble as a result of that. Or people are getting annoyed with them for congregating in front of their house because there happens to be a gym there or something like that. So if you're playing the game, you know, have, have some, con some consideration for the people in the area, the neighborhoods, the businesses, the residents, uh, the pe other people using the sidewalk, if you're stopped on the sidewalk. Uh, step to the side if you can, you know, don't block traffic. But even worse than playing while you're walking and not paying attention and blocking sidewalks or going places you're not supposed to be is playing while driving. Don't do that. The problem is, while you're not paying attention to the road because you're playing Pokemon Go while driving, you are going to kill somebody. You're going to hit somebody, hit the ditch, something. But you're going to cause pain for other people in all likelihood when it goes wrong. And note I said when, not if. It will go wrong because this game will tend to take your attention completely off the task at hand, which is driving. So don't play Pokemon Go while driving especially on public roads or parking lots or the like. Don't do it. It's stupid. If sending a text message while driving is a stupid idea, playing Pokemon Go while driving is a thousand times worse. Is at least with a text message you send it and then you put you can put your attention back on the road. Pokemon Go, you're driving along and suddenly there's a wild Pokemon you want and you, sh you put on the brakes or something and somebody piles into you from behind, you know. Don't be stupid. Now, I heard a report the other day about a driver almost hitting a pedestrian in a vacant parking lot at night. The pedestrian was there, you know, doing the... Uh, the Pokemon Go thing. Okay, now it's perfectly fine for the pedestrian to be in the middle of an empty parking lot. Um, you know, an obstacle in the middle of a big open space usually, yeah, pretty easy to, to miss, right? The driver was playing Pokemon Go, however, at the same time and wasn't watching where they were going and they almost hit the pedestrian. Now, here's the thing. As I recall, this took place in Alberta. Now, using a handheld device of any kind while driving or, or, not, or what have you is distracted driving. So if the guy was using a handheld device at all, then he was guilty of distracted driving. And even if he wasn't, it was a clear, provable case of driving without due care and attention. Okay? Okay. So either way, the driver should be charged with something. The problem is that because they didn't actually hit the pedestrian, they're not going to file any charges. They should be filing charges for, for not paying attention while driving. That's a charge that's been on the books for freaking ever. If there's not, if this isn't a case when it should be used, when is we got to start enforcing that type of rule on the road more so than worrying about someone going four kilometers an hour over the speed limit. Now, admittedly, speeding makes accidents worse when they happen, and they're often, and it's often an indicator of not paying attention and things like that, but speeding itself within a reasonable margin on a high-speed road is not necessarily going to be a safety hazard. 
whereas not paying attention always is, okay? So if you're driving, put the freaking game away. Don't play it while driving, period. Put the phone in the back seat or somewhere you cannot reach it. In fact, that's good advice in general. Put your phone where you can't reach it. Then you won't be tempted. Then you'll have to pull over to do anything with it, and that's a lot safer. And then you won't run afoul of distracted driving. So let's be smart, shall we? So I guess that's my rant on idiots playing the game. Uh, my my uh, suggestions, if you're going to play the game, is actually be aware of your surroundings. Uh, don't walk with your face in your phone. The game will alert if you are near a Pokemon. You don't have to be watching the phone continually if you adjust it so that it stays awake. And maybe you just have to look at it periodically to keep it awake, right? So that the GPS continues functioning. So you don't have to be continually watching it. Although the fact that it comes up with a nice looking map of the area while you're wandering around can be useful for navigation as well. So, you know, there is that. Um, and, uh, you know, so pay attention to where you are. Watch where you're going. Don't stop in the middle of a sidewalk to, to catch a Pokemon. Uh, try stepping to the side if at all possible. Step onto a boulevard or uh, maybe uh, on, at the base of somebody's walk or something like that instead of blocking the main thoroughfare on the sidewalk. Don't run out into a road or a parking lot or something without paying attention just because there's a wild Pokemon there. Uh, and make sure you're staying off of private property. Don't trespass. Uh, you're going to get into trouble eventually if you just randomly trespass all over the place. Uh, eventually, you're going to run into some wing nut with a rifle or something like that and get seriously hurt, especially somewhere like the United States or some third world country. You know, let's let's be intelligent there. And don't play the game while you're supposed to be doing something else like operating a motor vehicle. Don't do that. And if everyone sticks to that, then the game is great. Uh, everyone who's playing will be getting out, at least going places, even if they're driving to the Pokestops, parking and collecting loot and then going back. Um, you, you know, so you've got that. Uh, so it, it'd be good that way. But for the, the rest of the, the folks that actually are going to go to the more remote stops and so on, there will be some exercise involved. And this cannot be a bad thing. And here's the best part. Anybody that can walk can play the game. And that's the wonderful part about it. It's, it's actually remarkably inclusive. It's not strictly a gamer's game. You can casually play and never really do anything, never really compete in gyms. You can just go around and have the fun collecting, catching wild Pokemon and, and giving them to the professor uh, when your inventory gets full. Uh, and walking around hatching eggs and that's, you don't have to actually mess about in the gyms. Uh, so if the combat part of it doesn't uh, doesn't work for you, you don't necessarily have to do that to get some enjoyment out of it. But if the combat interests you, and it will most people, you can do that too. Well, there you have it. That's my ramble or rant on Pokemon Go. Uh, hopefully I'm not going to be coming back to address that again because some idiot uh, gets killed down the street not paying attention or something like that. But uh, for the most part, I think the game's a pretty decent idea. And I suspect the success of it is going to cause more games of a similar nature to hit the market soon. And that cannot be a bad thing. 
Anyway, if you want to be notified of future videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.